Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I'm here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And we're going to talk about how women are saving Star Wars. That's right, because it's about damn time that women are important to Star Wars. And that, you know, there's so much diversity needed, says this... Wait, she looks like she's a white woman. Oh, this white woman here? Yeah. Don't... I mean, I could be wrong. She might be, like, mixed. I'm not sure. But says says... Uh... Uh, Liz Elting from Forbes. We're going to talk. A very privileged woman who wrote the article. <laughs> the, the, the privileged, uh, presumably white business owner in Forbes. We're going to talk about how her opinion matters uh, as as a, a Karen. Her mm -hmm. opinion matters on Star yeah, Wars. Yeah, let's call it Karen. It doesn't matter what more, kind of Karen you are. More than yours. And then we're going to talk about uh, Daisy Rip Ridley. Talking, speaking of privilege, the media attacking Daisy Ridley over her privilege. Mm hmm. Uh, and then we're going to talk about how you need to go see Star Wars twice, et cetera, et cetera. But really, the gist of this video is the media, in trying to defend Star Wars, actually does more damage right. to the brand. Exactly. Uh, you know, this is not a good look because they're already, I mean, we are talking, we're a couple weeks away from the Rise of Skywalker, and we've got the media uh, firing up the engines, and they're turning the laser cannons on the fandom once again i know as soon as disney looks like they're gonna get somewhere and it might build it back up here comes the media disney you shouldn't be worrying about people like us your number one problem for this are people like this yeah the karens who are gonna tank your movie the uh the super super far left bloggers who are on the comic book blogs constantly attacking fandoms you're winning people back with the mandalorian right and you're gonna lose them again See, the easiest because way to make, of this. make people happy is just to do good stories and then make things like star wars that's how you win the fandom back um there's no secret there's no agenda that's pretty much it treat fans with respect uh you know make good choices and you know make stories that uh you know feel like star wars easy not a problem but no, 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 you keep targeting and kowtowing people like this, and this is where you have problems. We're not the one with the agenda, these people are. Yeah, so before we get into it, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants here on Clownfish TV. We're over 80,000 subs, sailing into 100,000 territory. Hopefully yep. we get there soon. Thank you so much for the support. Yes, we're doing another Star Wars video because um, that's all everybody's talking about right now. Good and bad is Star Wars. Oh, we've been trying to mix it up. We've been trying to mix it up, but you're, you're going to see more of this as we get closer. Yes. So, you know, Wonder Woman's coming and a bunch of movies are coming out. We'll be covering things like that. So, yeah, let's, um, <laughs> wash, let's get this done. Wash Star Wars out of our hair. That's right. <laughs> so, let's start. She starts off with um, Star Wars has women in it. And apparently, for many, that's a problem. No! No, it's not a problem. Fake news. It's not been a problem. See, this is why they keep telling you that you're, you're obviously, you hate liberals because you said things like fake news when we actually lean left, but whatever. Um, this is not a problem for many. I kept, every time I read the paragraph of this, I'm like, no, you might, if you're like me, be surprised by this. Yes, because it's not true. Women have been a mainstay of the franchise since, since the inception over 40 years ago. Yes, we know. Leia was never a simple lover and just a courageous rebel leader. She risked her, li she risked her lifetime, oh, her life time and time again. She wasn't just a damsel in distress who needed to be rescued, which I've mentioned repeatedly, but a well-drawn character who consistently demonstrated her strength and determination. Yes, and everybody keeps pointing that out. But as Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker looms on the horizon and The Mandalorian streams on Disney+, Plus, the story on the ground is very different. Women, so seeming legions of fans proclaim, are ruining Star Wars. That's not what they're saying at all. That's not what they're saying at all. You don't have your... You don't have your uh, story on the ground straight here. Uh, I don't think she's Liz. even on the ground. If you read her bio, she goes on about how important she is. And her bio is almost as long as one of these paragraphs in the story is about how, you know, she's so important. I doubt she's on the pulse of what the normal people think. Let's just skip down to that real quick and then we'll go back to the Look, article. Her... I'm a global CEO, entrepreneur, business leader, linguophile, philanthropist, feminist, and mother after living, studying, and working in five countries across the globe me, and quitting me, a... Me, me, particularly me, me, nightmarish job. Me, 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 oh my God. I decided it was time to chart my own future. Uh, so have I on a lot of this stuff. Oh my God. She's just a dream company. She found out of her dorm. This is the biggest like load of up your own ass I've ever seen. Yes. The you, biggest load of up your own have ass. Have you ever seen? I, I, I mean, a I, bottle of that, I don't, I don't think she has By any Geeky clue Sparkles. about what most of the fans think. She, she just wanted to write something that was going to get herself attention on Forbes. Yeah. By the way, I'm job hunting right now. 
Uh, you no, know. no, she stalked her own thing. Oh, she's, okay. She's that's so that's what they all say. Um, uh, I didn't get fired. This happens all the time. I didn't yes. get fired from my job. Now I'm a consultant. Oh, yeah, the last CEO, the one place she worked. Yeah. He was uh, not unemployed for two years. He was a consultant. He was a consultant. In middle management until he was, uh, you know, brought up to a, a CEO and, and ironically ran the company into the ground. Anyway, um, so they're going on about uh, Star Wars just one is just one front of the bewildering pop culture war that extends from television to film to video games and sports, blah, blah, blah. Like she understands any of this. Um, oh God, here it comes. It's frustrated men decry the merest presence of a woman with an agency power influences force diversity. No, that's not what they're complaining about. All right. Um, so you retweeted this on Twitter. This is exactly, this sums it up. This is perfectly. Zen Waters had sent the, it posted this and I retweeted it. This sums it up. Nobody has a problem with women in Star Wars. There have always been women in Star Wars. Uh, there have been very, very strong women in Star Wars. In fact, some people's favorite characters are uh, strong women. A lot of know. women in the expanded universe. There's a lot of strong women in the expanded universe. Mara Jade, my favorite. Mara Jade, yes. Uh, including my character. And they were completely deleted. So, but anyway. Yeah, is it? Okay, you want to talk about a slap in the face. Most of these women don't exist anymore. A lot of these women don't exist anymore because Disney decided in their infinite wisdom to nuke the expanded universe that mm -hmm. had a lot of uh, strong female characters in it. Nuke it and start over again with, with these. Yeah, basically what it says three. is, love all these female Star Wars characters and more? Well, too bad. They don't count and you're sexist unless you like these specific three and one producer. And one director, even though he's, he's a male. Um, that's exactly it. It doesn't matter how many strong female characters have been, how many you love, how many you, you know, have, have read the books or played the games or whatever. It doesn't matter. They don't matter. If you don't like Holdo, Ray, and Rose Tico, and think Kathleen Kennedy is, you know, the best thing since they you know, walked the earth, they're, you're a problematic, you're a misogynist. I got something called names in Spanish. Uh, inappropriate names and, you know, degrading female names in Spanish because I didn't think that those characters were the best characters ever. And I dared say I didn't like that. And it was a man, a man who called you this. After, he, you know, because he was going to show me where my place was. So this, this, uh, you know, to me, um, th this is not It's true. not forced diversity. What happened is they made the male characters really, really stupid and not for no reason other than to raise up those three women, those three female characters in that yeah. picture. And if you want to talk diversity, um, again, Star Wars has been diverse. The two male characters that I'm talking about were diverse as well. Yeah. Finn's black and... Uh, you know, Poe is uh, Hispanic. Yeah, and isn't that a slap in the face too? Because it's basically uh, these th three women, two of them are, are white. Mm -hmm. um, and now they're attacking the privilege of, of Daisy Ridley. Yeah, we're going to get we'll, there in a minute. We'll talk about later. She's attacking the privilege of this woman. Yeah, so why aren't you sticking up for Finn, who rightfully, I believe, should have been the lead right, in this I trilogy? Um, we have a person of color in Star Wars, and he gets relegated to sidekick status. Uh, we have a Hispanic, uh, basically a Hispanic Han Solo. Yes. And uh, they have to make sure they slap his ass down. This white woman has to slap his ass down. And the only reason that, that, that the only way that the fans would have been okay with those two is if they were together because they keep shipping them. Yeah. The, yeah. Is Okay. So the only way that Finn and Poe are acceptable to some people is if they're making out. Mm -hmm. Then it's okay. Mm -hmm. But we can't have uh, two. So you tell me now, looking at all these points. But this is not just agenda-driven uh, dribble. And that's what it is. And people, people are calling it out. It's not forced diversity. It's the fact that there's always been diversity, but it's been done in such a way that's organic and natural, and no one ever thought twice about it. When it became a problem was when play, people like this woman decided to say that was the problem with the movie. It's not because maybe the movie wasn't written well. Hell, the one guy's teaching it is how not to write a Star Wars movie when it comes to The Last Jedi. Yeah. It could be, it's not because it's not written well. It's not because you started out building up one thing and then completely changed direction and, and all that stuff you built up in the first movie threw out the window and had to, you, and, and it just made a mess and there's, it's not cohesive. No, it's not that. It's clearly because you don't like strong women and you're a misogynist or a racist or a homophobe or whatever you want to insult people with. Force diversity, my ass. Uh, okay. I have to read, let me read these next couple paragraphs. The, the arrogance, the arrogance. Oh, this is right up, the arrogance. Oh, this my woman opinion is, matters the more than yours because I am important. This, well, she reiterates how important she is. Um, 
So yeah, okay, so frustrated men decry the merest presence of a woman with any agency, power, influence, not true. Uh, or influence as forced diversity, corruption of something they believe belongs exclusively to them. Not, Not true. true. Women have loved Star Wars since the beginning, lady. You're, you're, you're taking agency away from women just with this article. Okay, it gets and worse. And people of minorities. It gets worse. It's hard to pinpoint exactly when this conversation really took off, but it's probably the most innocuous manifestation of radical misogyny that over the last decade has gripped much of the English-speaking world, and it's one that's making a radical claim to the companies that produce the media they adore. Stop catering to people other than us. Okay, here's where she really comes off. There's been, over the last six years, mountains and mountains written on the cultural crisis at play, and I'm not an expert on Star Wars fandom. No, you don't say. We no never, shit. We wouldn't have guessed that. I'm not going to rehash them. Business is my specialty. Guess what? It's our background, too. So I want to talk about this situation from that perspective. Oh, should, let's, let's, let's do that, honey. Should we talk about Solo, which had a white lead? Oh, let's talk about her business. Let's bombing talk about at the box from office. From her business perspective. I'd love to hear the answers. This has got to be Okay, so this is this reminds me of every self-help uh, marketing guru. If you go to her Facebook page, it's all about, you know, she, women, we are the best, men suck, men should lean out instead of lean in. It's all her, her whole thing is, look how feminist I am. But if you look at the actual definition of feminism, it's about equality. And that's what the actual literal definition of feminism is. This is not feminism. Now, this is somebody angling for a job as a CEO for some company other than her own that she started, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Uh, whether it be Star Wars, sports, or some other fandom, let's examine the central claim that unites all of these community revolts that real fans are being ignored, abandoned, or rejected in favor of women and people of color. No, okay, you, well, by your own admission, you don't know much about the Star Wars fandom. Clearly, because that is not true, as has been evidenced by many comments to back to you with pictures like that. I'm just saying, those pictures again, where did you have them? Oh, right Yeah, here. you know, right there, you we mean- got all these diverse women. Look at all these yeah, diverse women. Yeah, and all women the diversity. That Disney nuked. Uh, most of these women from existence. And all right here, all diversity, different cultures, male, female, whatever. Um, that's all there. But do what? What were you saying again? This is literally one of the dumbest things I've ever read. Uh, but don't you, it can't be because she's important. There's a degree of truth, though, that only a degree that these these are institutions that have been overwhelmingly marketed to and manufactured for boys and men. Sports has been a mainstay of male. What's this have to do with anything? A male culture for generations and geek I fandom. I know a lot of girls who are really into sports. Yeah, and geek fandom, such as it exists. Wait, has, she's trying to compare sports and geek. Wait. Basically, they're boys clubs, and it's her job as a businesswoman to come in and fix that. None of my girlfriends growing up, particularly into Marvel comics, we had our own pop culture institutions. We respected the fault. Bullshit! Because you're about, you're, what, what, is she like our age? Yeah, I think so. That's a low. 70s and 80s were different. Well, I was, yeah. We were, yeah, whatever. Okay, I just want to, just, I'm going to stop her right there. If everybody loved, if this is just about uh, white men being the lead, how come this was the lowest performing Star Wars movie of the Disney Star Wars? Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm just putting that out there. We got Han Solo and Chewie. Han Solo's Ali is mostly, uh, other than Donald Glover, I think is mostly white cast, and it bombed. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with that, because if if your hypothesis was true, everybody would have gone to Solo, you know, because it's got white people in it. Right, and white men, because it's only for boys. Right, but... Women Star were never allowed like Star Wars. Right. Right, but that's not the problem, is it? That's not really the problem. There's a bigger problem here because you don't actually look at what's going on in the fandom. You're just looking at it from on a surface level and attaching buzzwords to it to promote yourself and your business or fish for a job and using Forbes to do that. Uh, you're not looking into it. You're, you're saying a lot of dumb things. You know what kills me too? Like when we were kids and stuff too, they had, you had your geek groups and your fans, you know, with your big, big you know, Dungeons and Dragons, or you have like, you know, now they have cosplay groups or whatever. And you know what? There were boys and girls and nobody really judged the other people. Yeah. It, you know, it, it, no one thought, oh, you're a girl, you can't be here. You know, you're a boy, get out of my, you know, out of my clubhouse. That didn't happen. God, okay, so they're talking about how in the 70s and 80s things were different. Actually, in the 70s and 80s... People were a lot more accepting. Yes, uh, there were a lot more... Like, I remember playing Star Wars, you know, with the neighbor kids, you know, girls and boys, and we all played Star Wars together, and uh, the neighbor girl, she didn't just play with Leia. Everybody was playing with everything. Care Bears, Cabbage mm -hmm. Patch Kids, video games. Back in the day, we were actually more progressive in the 80s mm -hmm. than we are now. Video games were marketed primarily to families, whole yes. families. If you look at some of those old Atari ads, uh -huh. you'll see it was like grandma right was playing. the boxes. Playing. Yeah, the boxes. The whole family was gathered around the Atari. Um, arcades, you look at the old uh, uh, 
I was watching at Starcade, the old arcade mm -hmm. game show. You had all kinds of people, yeah, families um, competing against each other, women competing on Starcade. Uh, it was gender blind, it was race blind, uh, gaming was, and then you know, and that was that was thirty years ago. So don't mm -hmm. say that this is how things always were. Uh, same with no, they're saying, about the, you know, they're saying that, you know, it's a different world because mass media is made this way. Articles like this, bull articles like this one is what is causing the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Nobody was outraged about this, this shit back no then. No one's outraged about it now either about women. Just, it's not about being a, her being a woman. Just people like you uh, who are trying to cash in the outrage, right? Mm -hmm. um, so they said, yeah, uh, dominated by huge multinationals who have spent decades cultivating fan bases and cultural presence. Owing in part to some of the very fans who are now angry at their presence, girls have spent decades falling in love with the same sports shows, comics, and movies as their brothers. It was, well, you know what? I actually know some girls who fell in love with that stuff uh, and it had nothing to do with their brothers. Right. They just, they just, isn't that kind of... One of the reasons you like me. Oh, this girl knows more about Star Wars than I do. You knew what Street Hawk was. Yes. And Geeky actually was a Star Wars character in the EU and she got obliterated. They, they wiped her from existence. Thank you, Disney. Um, But this is not true. This is not... I know girls who were into comics and sports and you're you're basically saying for girls to get into this stuff, they needed a male to usher them into Wait, the world. It gets better. Yeah, so that you took you just took women's agency away. Yeah. Congratulations. Um, that's good from a business point. There's way more money in marketing to boys and girls than boys and boy and boys love. No kidding. Wow, your years of business experience all comes down to that sentence because that's why you're an expert. And water is wet. I mean, obviously, a larger you know, demographic is going to have a better marketing turnout than if you're narrowing it down. That's just the stupidest, you know, advice I have seen so far. I would actually argue that that they are marketing Star Wars incorrectly because what they're doing, and you know, with people like you, marketing helping, the girls only. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, even people were complaining about the Galaxy's Edge. They said that they were kind of weirded out that like they made sure it was always women and girls that they were showing they in the did. commercials that it's uh girls that they're showing in the commercials for lego um that even disney you know when, it, when i was at their uh, uh marketing events they were like we basically market to the karens because they're the moms they're the ones who decide how to spend right. money but they're leaving the the men in the dust and then they're surprised when even a male a male-led movie bombs at the box right. office. So, yes, you should. But, you know, let me state the obvious and act like I'm an expert. Can please continue? This is like, I swear, this woman is like every, like, marketing guru. I've met a lot of them. I've worked in the corporate world. I've worked in corporate we marketing. We actually come from a business background, <clears throat> like her. Yeah. So the pushback is real, vocal, and outright destructive. Kelly Marie Tran... Okay, obviously, you're not looking into the situation. Because as soon as you bring up Kelly Marie Tran... That's because you just did a Google search. An actress who appeared in 2017's Last Jedi was harassed off social media following mountains there of abuse. There was not death mountains threats. of abuse. No, this is this is not this is not how things went down. The same happened to countless women sport cast, sportscasters uh, from local news rep to ESPN. You know what else happened? Who else had happened to Ruby Rose when she announced she was doing Batwoman because she wasn't gay enough? How quickly they forget? Yes, Ruby Rose, who's now being praised, 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 praised as Batwoman, uh, was harassed off of Twitter by people who said she wasn't gay enough to be the gay people that they're the, the people they're pandering to. Yes. They were the ones who, who, you know, you forget that. Oh, and then they're going about Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel, well, the problem with Captain Marvel was be, wasn't because of the character. It was because of the actress making comments that were really rude. And The Last Jedi, um, but it just sucked. And, and not people, actually, a lot of people were all really excited to go see Last Jedi because they really liked Force Awakens and they were disappointed. And the Ghostbusters reboot, one, it wasn't unnecessary. The most, the biggest complaint about the Ghostbusters 2016 was it's an unnecessary reboot. Yeah, don't reboot Ghostbusters. And then they're like, why are we making it all women? Why can't we have a mixed cast? Why can't it be a continuation? Like they're, they're the kids of the Ghostbusters or something. That was the problem with it. And then when you saw the movie, it was actually, uh, they literally made every male character in that movie stupid or an asshat. Yeah. There, you know, there was a clear agenda with that film. So that is why people uh, didn't like those. But yet people were very excited about the new Ghostbusters movie coming out. Men and women, mm -hmm. surprisingly. And you know what? All those downvotes on the Ghostbusters 2016 trailer, it wasn't just men. Look, uh, A lot of women were complaining about it too. I'm going to cite some examples here of, of, again, she basically destroys her own argument using her logic that 
you need to cater just to women because they're the, the decision makers because we're seeing the movies that cater she's got done saying that you should do it above yeah i know this is ridiculous she i i don't know what side of the fence she's on here the message was directed not only at the individual women involved but the companies themselves you stand only with us or we won't stand with wait, you no i thought you were, wait whoa, 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 whoa. i thought she was a, coming at this from a business standpoint a business standpoint is, if we don't like your product, we won't buy it. And then companies take that advice moving forward on how to better make their products so that they can have the customers buy their products. That's how business works. Not what she just said. Okay. And yeah, and here's where she she shoots herself in the foot. The numbers belie the point, and that's what I want people making the decisions and marketing strategies to remember. All these movies are making billions and billions of dollars. The money is rolling in. Yeah, that's the problem. The money is rolling in. Uh, new generations of fans are being made right here, right now, with potentially, potentially, decades of loyalty and purchases ahead of them. Yeah, well, they already have fans. That's the problem. You already have fans with decades of loyalty and purchases ahead and behind them. Well, mostly behind them now. And then they've got the middle finger and told that they don't want them anymore and they're not listening to the real reasons they're upset, they just instead calling them names and blaming it on things that's not the problem. Again, you keep saying you want the entire audience, but you're you're basically exclude you're you're going to the other extreme and saying, well let's exclude the boys now and chase the exactly. female audience. And she does I know, I actually there was a, a thing I shared on Twitter about this too. Yeah, so um okay, and the thing is is the sales of Star Wars are down because mm -hmm. they, they have told the old audience to go fuck themselves. And they're the honest. ones buying the product because you right. know in business, you want to make money. I thought you were an expert. The same messages that resonated with 10 year old boys in 77 resonate with 10 year old girls in 2019. They resonated with girls in 1977 they too because I was a girl then. Yeah, anyone could be a hero and that you could be whatever you want, that you're important, powerful and have a future. That's why I love Star Wars since I was little, little, was because I believed from Star Wars that I could be anything I wanted to be. And, I, and it didn't matter who you were, where you came from, you could be a hero, you could, you, could, you could matter. I got that from Star Wars when I was a little kid, back in the 70s and 80s. Actually, it was more the 80s, but still. I'm not asking you to be sentimental about it. Uh, she a, has tried to sentiment the whole way through it. Yeah, through a purely mercenary lens, there's little to be gained by doubling down on an insular audience rather than embracing the mass of mass media. Mass media is causing the problem. Especially as streaming moves more and more to separate services owned by conglomerates. You don't want some subscribers, you want them all. Okay, explain Terminator Dark Fate. Bombing, it had women, what happened? What, it, women didn't go. Charlie's Angels? Yeah, guess what? Women didn't go. Cause you know, uh, Men in Black International, that should have been a hit, right? It had- Women didn't go. Cause you know what? You said, cause again, you want everybody. You want the entire audience and you told the men. We just told them we don't want men. You told the men to go fuck themselves. And you're saying you don't, you should double down into their eyes. But by the way, it's not that they're, they're, I think Disney's finding out rather quickly that they are not the vocal minority. It is no. the majority of fans. And even beyond the fans you hear about on the internet, there are so many people out there that are the, the general public. General public doesn't like it either. That's the ones you have to be worried about. Not even us or the people that are vocal for or against. Completely disregard all these people in, if you want to, because we're, we actually are a small percentage of the mass people out there most people are in the middle and most people don't give a shit anymore i'm sorry i shouldn't use that word because that makes it look like i'm not as intelligent as her most people don't give a poop anymore um karen they just don't <laughs> karen uh yeah you know what the general audience tanked solo because the general audience uh was burnt out on disney's star wars you know that should have been a slam dunk you should have had you know han and chewy and the falcon and lando and all the all the member berries you can eat and it was a bomb mm -hmm. so this shoots your again you did well her, half the thing she said shoots her own argument yeah. down she's not exactly the brightest bulb in the box did did she work at some point did she work for disney or work with disney or consult for disney because this is what she says at the end and this is exactly what disney said to us during their marketing rah-rah thing uh, considering that women make up a majority of moviegoers and are far and away the major decision makers in the household purchasing decisions, well, it seems like a no-brainer to me. That's so Disney's attitude. market to the Karens. Market to the Karens. Because, you know, appliances are going to get them to Star Wars. Oh, my God. The, the Star Wars appliances. Like, yeah. Let's... Okay, I love this. Hey, we're... Um, we're really progressive here at Disney. Let's let's uh, tell women to get back in the kitchen with a Ray refrigerator, Ray stove. Go make me a pie. That's right. Know? But by her own argument, women are the ones who are the main moviegoers because you only have, you know, whatever. Arguably, you have, you know, just a couple choices anyway. Um, so my comment to this is, they still didn't go. They still didn't go to these movies that were 
targeted to women. They did not go, which is why the movies did bad. Yeah. They did poorly. Again, where were where were all the women to save Solo? Uh, nobody turned up for it. Nobody, you know, and the, the, the old school fans, you told them to go away. You didn't want them. And uh, Galaxy's Edge was a, a flop at first. Now it is doing better with the new ride, but people didn't turn up. Where are all the, the female decision There are a lot of people that are coming, um, but that's because it's a brand new ride and they want to see it. Um, it's just, you know, th this is dumb. I mean, the, her, her, her brilliant marketing strategy was target to both, but, but, but she's saying that, but then her exa examples are target women. And that's been working so great so far. And um, it, it's like, hello, duh. This is this is the, okay. This is what I want to talk about Disney because. But she's so much more important than you, so her opinion matters know, more. Her opinion matters. she'll tell you how much more important you, she is than you are. She does in like three paragraphs. She tells you how much smarter she is than you. Here's the thing, Disney. Uh, people like this doing articles. If if your intention now, I this, she's probably just doing this just to attach. Oh, buzzwords, buzzwords, buzzwords get some attention for herself. She's right. got a book coming out or something. Or no, she's promoting her company. Uh, Disney never hire her to do any consultation for you because these journalists, these people writing these kinds of articles are the ones that are chasing your customers away. Mm -hmm. If you were smart, you go find people that are, you know, that are in the middle that you can, that you can say, okay, here's where your problems are and here's how we can improve that. But you need to improve this, this, and this on your side, Yeah. you know, and be fit and you balance it out. You need balance and, and you're not getting balance. No. And th Disney doesn't want to hear it. Disney no, they're, used... they're creating their own imbalance. Yeah. Um, so speaking of the media doing damage weeks before the rise of Skywalker comes out, uh, Daisy Ridley, they had this article of Daisy Ridley in, let's see the guardian. And, uh, it starts out now here's where it's really interesting. Because at first it's like, oh, poor Daisy Ridley is going to be attacked by the, the man babies because J.J. Abrams warned her that Star Wars was more of a religion. Uh, it was a huge deal. It wasn't just another acting gig. That is true. Uh, yeah, that's a hundred percent true. There are a lot of people who you know ask Aiden Christensen how that they, went. Was the Jedi even listed as a religion on like? Yeah, it is actually. Yeah. But uh, you know, it, it is a life changing experience. Uh, sometimes good, sometimes bad for the people that work on those films probably part of the reason why you know ridley boyega and oscar isaac don't want anything to do with it yeah. after this I, I don't blame them move on to other stuff right okay so they make it out like oh the man babies are going to attack her they talk a little bit about social media in this article and she basically said she chose to to get off of social media because she didn't want people knowing where she was and what she was doing all the time mm -hmm. and she needed to detach but herself other from media it. presented it as she was chased off by yeah. the man babies and that's not what happened yeah she and she she even talks about how when she's out with friends she's like hey could you not tweet that you're having dinner with me because i don't want your fifty thousand followers knowing where i'm at mm -hmm. so it looks like originally they were trying to be like oh the toxic men are are you know uh, doing this to Daisy Ridley, poor Daisy Ridley. Then they turn it around. They aren't getting what they want. They aren't getting what they want on the at the Guardian, okay? And they turn it around on Daisy Ridley. Mm-hmm. Well, she was like giving, feeding into the whole men, men, men suck, you know. Yeah. Talks to people on social media. It, it was all, it was all kind of you know chit chat and small talk, and it was a pretty pleasant interview. And then they, we get down here because you know the media has to, they have to find something juicy uh, to lead with. But they didn't, they buried it. I ask if she thinks it's been easier for her to be confident and navigate her celebrity because of the privilege in her life, of boarding school, her upbringing, and so on. Ridley is suddenly incredulous. Most people would be. I would be too. It's almost like, do you think it's been easier for you as a rich white woman to be, you know, and she's probably like, what the hell? We were just talking about making Star Wars movies and having fun, and now you're hitting me with this. And they just keep hitting her with it. She has what privilege I have? How? <laughs> yeah, the privilege I have? How? No. Genuinely, how? Um, well, I say, in terms of wealth, class, education, that kind of privilege, and knowing how to decode the rules in certain spaces, as a caveat, I add that both of us have privilege, and it's not a criticism. It sounds like it to me. It sounds like Chris is me, too. Yeah, they're trying to trick her into saying something stupid. I was simply curious to know what she thought. Things take an awkward turn. No kidding! Well, no, because no. There's a very long, intense pause before she insists that actually there's very little difference between her experience and that of John Boyega, who grew up in South London, to British Nigerian immigrant parents. John grew up on a council estate in Peckham, and I think uh, me and him are similar enough that no. I don't point out that members of... Yeah. So she's basically like, no, John and I get along great, you know. We have similar different backgrounds and, you know, we both had struggles like, and here we are. Like real people. Yeah. You can come from different places and still get along, right? 
Um, so the author's like, I don't point out that members of Ridley's family were establishment figures. Her grandfather uh, was the head of engineering for the BBC. His brother was the dad's army actor and playwright, Arthur Ridley. While Boyega had to apply for a hardship fund to join Theater Peckham, then why did they put Daisy Ridley in the lead, not John Boyega as Finn? That's right. Um, this because we're privileged. They're trying to trick her. <laughs> also, she adds, I went to boarding school for performing arts, which is different. In parentheses, her publicist later calls to clarify that it Ridley must have really won. shook her up. They would insinuate that she had some kind of special thing because she was. Yeah. Because I had her publicist call. She's like, she got a scholarship to go. So did, so when he says, I didn't mention about this, you know, him having to get a scholarship. Well, she had to get a scholarship too. It's an unexpectedly defensive detour. No, it's not, media. You did this to Joaquin Phoenix. Mm -hmm. You tried to trick him into saying something stupid. And he had the to... Henry, to, to, uh, Henry Cavill the other day. Henry Cavill. They tried to trick Henry Cavill. These journalists, these... I'm not even going to use journalists. They're not journalists. They're activists using established platforms to try to trick people into saying something to confirm confirmation bias to confirm their political mm. ideology. Daisy Ridley, you were the poster child for diversity and uh, all of that with Star Wars, but now you're just another privileged white woman that they're trying to get. That's right. They're trying to get you, Daisy. And yeah, I don't blame you for walking away from so, Star Wars. But you know, so wait, because all the problems, all the white guys who don't like the new movies, Right. You know, no, it's not. The problem is the media. The problem is the media. Crap. And people like, you know, Ryan Johnson, the way they behaved on social media, did not do them any favors for winning the fandom back. No. The way that the, that uh, uh, Kathleen Kennedy has behaved has not done any favors to win the fandom back. So for all this crap that, that you know, this article and the other article is spouting, it is all a load of hogwash. This is, this is weird, though. Like, they buried this in the middle of the article, but... Um, it was unexpectedly defensive. I tried to change the subject, get the distinct feeling that her publicist sitting behind me in Ridley's eye line has made some sort of silent intervention. I'm not saying what you're saying is wrong. I've just never been asked that before. So I'm like, oh, I don't think so. But now they can now they can jump her because they're almost done with her trilogy, right? Mm -hmm. So they don't need her anymore. The media doesn't need to use her as a weapon to attack the fans anymore. Now they can just, you know, go right for well, the jugular. they're already and... starting on how they're going to use the new movies as the weapon oh. to attack the fans. Yeah, I saw that they were they were talking about how, uh, and I forget who it was, if it was Abrams or Bob Iger, talking about how the next Star Wars movies won't have the baggage of the fandom. They won't have all that It has the name Star Wars on it. It's going to have baggage of the fandom. Not the rate you, they're going. You don't want baggage of the fandom? Make new things. That's something that Disney doesn't want to do anymore. They want to just repurpose and reboot and redo everything they already own or, you know, appropriate or everything else. Yeah, so um, the media not doing not doing Star Wars any favors, uh, not doing her any favors. No, and I, I really do. I think they're and this is this is how this works. This is what these people. You know, John Boyega didn't get it either. Um, John Boyega was kind of fed the line that the fans were against him, against Finn, against diversity, and people were I like, "I would watch the heck out of a Finn movie." I, I would watch a Finn movie if he was handled right. He I had so much watch potential. These three together, if they had done it as a, a movie that felt like Star Wars and a team. And it felt like the the classic trilogy. I would have liked it. Yeah, but they they did this new cast a dirty because they were trying to pander to mm -hmm. some new audience, and now the journalists are going to turn on you. Yes, and then women like this. I'm a businesswoman because business me 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 business, and I know more than you because of business. And like I said, if you go to her Facebook page, literally everything in it is feminism, feminism, feminism. How men are bad, how men are wrong, how women are better. Uh, business, business, men, men suck. That's yeah. basically her Facebook page. Um. I wouldn't listen to what she says for all her. I know more than you because of business. Her business advice was no kidding. Guess what? If you, 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 you know, market to a bigger demographic, you're going to hit more people. No, you don't say. Yeah, that's uh, pretty basic, pretty basic. So uh, anyway, it's going to be really interesting to see how they deal with, um, you know, the, the, the leads in the sequel trilogy, because I think they'll be out of vogue, you know, after know. this. And um, it is people like this who want to, I'm sorry, you want to take over Star Wars and use it as a platform to push your ideology. And you made it very, very clear in this article that that's what you want. She even brought the Mandalorian, but the people weren't having a fit about that in the Mandalorian. She didn't talk that much, did she? No. And that's the thing. And so even, even if by some miracle, Rise of Skywalker is amazing. Everybody comes out, they're like, oh my gosh, I loved it. They saved it. It's great. That will be a big miracle. Even by a, a miracle, miracle. That miracle. People like her and, and these bloggers are going to still find a way that the fandom's evil and bad because they won't get the hits if they don't. Yep. 
We'll just move on to something else and talk about other things. Actually, one of the things we want to do is start creating things. So, you know, if we had to stop doing, you know, critiques tomorrow, it's fine for us. But for these people, it's not. So, yeah, that's it. They don't have a backup. Like, they, they literally stir the shit day in day out and they have to because the blogs are blogs are dying these websites are dying they're constantly like, like you go to the guardian they're begging for money they're they're demanding you turn your ad blocker off they're like if forbes, you want the same thing forbes won't let you read the article unless you turn your ad blocker off they're, forbes. All, they're all doing that forbes which should have plenty of money coming in from all the business people like the experts like her on like business. karen who should be marketing 101 yeah. is her yeah. expertise yeah um but yeah cara dune right uh let's you know Men, men hate the Mandalorian, right? Because of uh, Cara Dune. That's right. Uh, so, this so, is went a lot longer than you said, so let's wrap it yeah, up. Yeah, we're going to wrap this one up. A lot to unpack here, but it's already begun. It's already begun again. Uh, here come the attacks. So we'll talk to you guys later. Bye. Hey, guys. Thanks for watching Clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfishsupport.com. That's clownfishsupport.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.